Hi everyone, Boomer here with another video where I try to explain relatively complicated aspects of Minecraft in an easy to understand way. In this video, I'll be discussing how to locate the stronghold after exiting the nether. While the techniques I'm about to show you will primarily be used by speedrunners, anyone who plays Minecraft can benefit from this information. Some of the concepts I'll be discussing involve relatively complicated mathematics. I do my best to keep things simple throughout most of the video. However, at the end of the video, I'll be taking a closer look at the math used to calculate some of the data. I encourage you to stick around and see if it makes sense. Who knows, if you're still in school, perhaps you can convince your teacher to give you extra credit every time you successfully locate a stronghold using these techniques. Also, if you think I deserve it, please consider subscribing, leaving a like, or a comment. It would really help me out. All right, let's get started. The first thing we'll want to understand to effectively locate the stronghold is something known as triangulation. So what is triangulation? Since we're talking about Minecraft here, I'll be discussing triangulation as it relates to the game and how it can help you locate the stronghold. That being said, the principles contained in this video may be used in all sorts of applications. Using triangulation to locate the stronghold is accomplished by throwing an eye of ender from two different locations calculating the angle variance, and then applying some math to determine the number of blocks between our current position and the stronghold itself. As shown here, the technique gets its name from the triangle formed when connecting the three points we care about. Since calculators aren't allowed in speedrunning and solving trigonometric calculations in your head is not something most people get too excited about, we'll need to simplify things a bit. To make our lives easier, we'll want to standardize on a few things when performing the steps to locate a stronghold. The easiest way to do that is to be deliberate about how we step through the process. Here, I'll show you two important steps you'll want to remember. If you do not perform these two steps, everything else I'm about to show you won't be accurate. The first thing to remember is that after throwing your first eye and making note of the angle, You'll want to turn 90 degrees in the direction of the least amount of obstructions. Either direction is fine, but it must be 90 degrees. The reason we turn 90 degrees is so we end up creating a right triangle, which will allow us to apply the appropriate math later. The second thing to remember is that after turning 90 degrees, you should travel 17.5 blocks in that direction. Where we end up is where we'll throw our second eye of ender. We'll talk more about how to estimate 17.5 blocks in a bit. And don't worry if this is confusing. Next, I'll go through a few examples and show you how to practice. In this example, I'll break down the steps we should take as we exit the nether and enter the overworld. We'll first want to give ourselves a bit of distance between the portal and where we throw our first eye of ender. Be sure to open your F3 data as it's required for the next steps. You'll notice I'm throwing the eye straight down. This is not necessary, but can help you identify the initial direction and prevent you from losing track of the eye on the first throw. It's become a habit of mine, so you'll see me do it several times. As you can see, I did my best to align the green vertical line with the center of the eye. In doing so, I'll check the angle I'm facing and make a mental note. This particular throw resulted in an angle of 58.5 degrees. As discussed a moment ago, the next step is to rotate 90 degrees in the direction with the least amount of obstacles. I choose to turn right, which means my next angle of travel should be 148.5 degrees. I then use a trick to travel an estimated 17.5 blocks, more on that in a bit, which will take me to the location for my second throw. I then throw my second eye of ender and do my best to align the green vertical line with the center of the eye. The second throw resulted in an angle of 57 degrees. Doing some simple math, the angle variance, or difference between the two angles, turns out to be 1.5 degrees. Since trigonometry is the last thing you want to be doing during a speed run, I created a simple table that should help you identify your current distance from the stronghold. Remember, my table is only valid if you rotate 90 degrees after your first throw and you travel as close to 17.5 blocks as possible. Of course, you'll want to calculate the eye of ender angles as accurately as possible too. Based on the chart we see here, 
The stronghold should be approximately 669 blocks away. Let's see how we did. Not bad. We're off by 23 blocks, which could be attributed to the angles we measured for each eye of Ender or the distance we traveled for the second throw. Either way, calculating the distance to the stronghold with only a 3% variance is pretty good. By now you're probably asking, why 17.5 blocks and how am I supposed to know when I've traveled that distance? Well, the answer to the first question can be found on the chart we looked at earlier and is directly related to the math. As mentioned previously, we'll take a closer look at the math later, but take a look at the correlation between a one degree angle variance and the corresponding distance to the stronghold. Standardizing on 17.5 blocks of travel between our first and second eye of ender throws allows us to assume a one degree angle variance means we're about a thousand blocks from the stronghold. I'll refer to this as our baseline. We can then do some simple math to estimate other distances. For example, if you cut the angle in half to 0.5 degrees, you effectively double the distance to the stronghold. Likewise, doubling the angle variance to two degrees will effectively cut the baseline distance in half or 500 blocks. Other angle variances we can calculate relatively easily are three degrees, which results in the distance being one third of baseline or approximately 333 blocks, four degrees, which results in the distance being one fourth of baseline or approximately 250 blocks, and five degrees, which results in the distance being one fifth of baseline or approximately 200 blocks. With a bit of practice, you'll be able to use the baseline of one degree resulting in 1000 blocks and the other variances I just listed to make some pretty good estimates about how far you might be from the stronghold. Knowing when you've traveled 17.5 blocks can be somewhat of a challenge. I have a couple suggestions that may help, but in this case, nothing beats practice. Having a clear unobstructed path to travel to throw your second eye of Ender doesn't happen all the time. In fact, there's a good chance you'll spawn back in the overworld in a forest or ocean making things more difficult. I suggest you get good at visually estimating the distance. I'll put a link in the description to a spreadsheet I created that will allow you to plug in your current X and Z coordinates and the angle you're planning to travel. It will then give you the X and Z coordinates of the block that's 17.5 blocks away. Remember, this should only be used as a practice tool and is not permitted for real runs. The first method you can use to travel 17.5 blocks requires you to complete four and a half sprint jumps. Four sprint jumps is pretty straightforward, but knowing what a half sprint jump is may take some time to perfect. I suggest you do what I did and create a practice area with the start and stop points identified by colored blocks. You could then practice going back and forth until you get the hang of it. The other method involves at least one ender pearl. Assuming you have an ender pearl to spare, throwing one in the direction of travel at a vertical angle of negative 2.6 degrees typically lands you pretty close to where you want to be. Again, you'll want to experiment with this a bit to get the hang of it. If you have other ways of reliably traveling 17.5 blocks, please let us know in the comments section. I'm sure lots of people would like to know. Now that we've identified the direction of the stronghold and the distance we need to travel, we'll want to start our journey. Of course, you'll want to try and maintain the direction indicated by the second eye of Ender, but terrain, mobs, and other factors will certainly get in the way. If you stay relatively true to your initial heading, you should be fine. If you feel you have deviated quite a bit, you can always throw another eye, but each time you do so, you're risking a break, which may impact your ability to activate the end portal. Something else to be aware of. When you throw an eye of Ender, it points towards the chunk containing the starter staircase, not the portal room itself. The starter staircase plays an important role in navigating the stronghold once you get there. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out my video on stronghold navigation. As we head to the stronghold, it's hard to know how far we've actually traveled. If our direction is relatively in line with either the X or Z axis, it's fairly simple to calculate how far we traveled. However, typically, that's not the case. 
You can also use the spreadsheet mentioned earlier to calculate the exact block to travel to based on the data you gather during triangulation. Obviously, this would not be permitted during a normal run, but might help you practice. Once we get to a point where we think the stronghold should be, we need to do one final triangulation. As you can see here, I'm thinking the chunk containing the stronghold starter staircase is located in one of the chunks ahead of me. I don't know which one, so I'll need to figure it out. I turn on my F3 data and chunk borders to aid the process. There are several ways to do this, but I'll show you the one that I like to use. I like to travel about two chunks perpendicular to the path I've been on. Either direction is fine, but the goal is to see the eye snap in a sharp direction, much different from the previous angle we took back at our second throw. As you can see here, the eye snapped sharply back towards the path we were on, indicating we're very close. While this one throw may be enough for a seasoned veteran, I like to throw at least one more eye to validate the location. To do so, I'll travel perpendicular to my last path, which is essentially parallel to my original path. Again, the eye snapped even more sharply back towards the original path. Based on these two throws, I know for certain which chunk contains the starter staircase. In some cases, it may be difficult to tell due to terrain and other factors. In those situations, you'll want to throw another eye to make certain. To do that, simply travel to the chunk you think is most likely to contain the starter staircase and make your throw. If you followed these steps, chances are you'll only be off by one chunk and the starter staircase will be located in an adjacent chunk. There is no substitute for practice when it comes to deploying these techniques. Whether you practice in a mock setting or in real speed runs, you want to get good at this. Side note, once you have located the appropriate chunk, you'll want to dig down around 4-4 or 3-3 within the chunk. Check out my video on Stronghold Navigation for more information on this and many other things, including how to locate secret rooms. Alright, so you've made it this far. Before I wrap things up, let's take a close look at the math used to accomplish triangulation. My example will be directly related to Minecraft, so it may have the best chance of being interesting to those of you that can't stand normal math. I'll try to keep this brief. Let's do a quick review on the steps we take to triangulate the stronghold. Our first steps are to open our F3 data, throw an eye of Ender, then make note of the angle of travel. In this example, the eye traveled in the direction of 27 degrees. Our next step is to rotate 90 degrees from the direction we just measured and travel 17.5 blocks. In our case, doing some simple math, we'll want to turn and face 117 degrees, then head off for our second throw. The way Minecraft measures angles can be a bit tricky, so make sure you get used to it. You'll notice that if you face directly south towards positive Z, the angle counter will be at zero degrees. As you rotate to the right, the angle will increase until it reaches 180 degrees, which is directly north, towards negative Z. Once you've reached 180 degrees and you continue to turn to the right, the angle will flip to negative 180 degrees and begin counting in negative numbers until it reaches zero again, which means you're back to facing south. This can make adding and subtracting angles a bit tricky, so you want to get used to it. After we've traveled 17.5 blocks, we'll want to throw our second eye and make note of the angle. Finally, we calculate the angle variance by subtracting the second angle from the first, in our situation, it doesn't matter if the result is a positive or negative angle. Since we're looking for distance away from our current location, we'll just take the absolute value of our result. Let's talk about the things we know based on the information we've gathered. First, by definition, the sum of all three angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees. We are dealing with the right triangle because we chose to rotate 90 degrees before traveling 17.5 blocks. Since we know one of the angles is 90 degrees and the other is 1 degree, this means the third angle is 89 degrees. 
We also know the side opposite the one degree angle is 17.5 blocks because we chose to travel that distance. Finally, we'll want to solve for the hypotenuse, which is referenced by the question mark shown here. In order to determine the distance we need to travel, we'll need to use some trigonometry. I've listed the three equations for sine, cosine, and tangent here. The Greek symbol you see between the parentheses is known as theta and is the variable used to identify an angle. Since we are solving for the hypotenuse, we'll want to use either sine or cosine because those are the only two equations containing the hypotenuse as a value. If we pick the one degree angle to use in place of theta, then we know the length of the opposite side. Therefore, we know two of the three pieces of the sine equation. If you know two out of three things in a math equation, you can always solve for the third. Now, let's solve this. I'll step through each process showing my work as I go. The equation we're using is sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Plugging in the values we know gives us this. Note. I'm now using a question mark to reference the hypotenuse. Now we need to perform a couple math operations to get things on the correct side of the equal sign. Multiplying both sides by the question mark results in this. Then dividing both sides by the sign of one degree gives us this. Now that the question mark is hanging out on the left side of the equation all by itself, we can finish up. Using a calculator and making sure it's set to degrees and not radians, we get this value for the sine of one degree. Finally, dividing 17.5 by that value results in a distance of approximately 1,000 blocks. Hopefully this all made sense. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on whether or not I should include stuff like this in future videos. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope it helps improve your game in some way. I have lots of video ideas planned for the future, but would be happy to hear your suggestions. Until next time, bye.